In the second segment about electron configurations, we want to look at elements that fall beyond the first couple energy levels. The best way that I know for understanding which orbitals fill in which order is to use the periodic table. The periodic table is set up to very easily show you what comes next in terms of orbitals. And the orbitals all make sense in terms of the columns of the period and rows of the periodic table. So if we look at this diagram here, we see the periodic table listed by the final orbital that is filling for each of the elements. On the left-hand side, we have the alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals. For the alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals, you notice there's only two columns because it is filling in the S orbitals. And it fills in the S orbitals same row as energy level. So the 1s orbitals in the first row down through the 7s orbitals in the seventh row. So these will finish with s orbitals. s1 in the first column, s2 in the second column. So the element, say for example, lithium would be 2s1 to finish with. It would have everything before that. So 1s2, 2s1. And we read this going across left to right and top to bottom, just like you would read a book. So we start with 1s. Once 1s is full, we fill 2s, then 2p, 3s, then 3p. This is where we start to get the overlaps. There are certain in orbitals that are lower energy level, even though they're in a higher, lower energy, even though they're in a higher energy level. 4s is at a lower energy than 3d, just slightly, so it actually comes before 3d. So we fill the 4s here, then the 3d, the first of the transition metals. You notice the transition metals is 10 columns wide, and that is because that is filling the d orbitals, which can take a maximum of 10 electrons. Five orbitals, 10 electrons. The p columns here, six columns, because the p orbitals can hold six electrons in their three orbitals. And these last two, LA and AC, we're filling in one of the Ds, then we switch over. So we do 5D1, then we come down and do all of the Fs. There are 14 columns here, so we'll do 4F1 through 4F14. Then we would start back up with the 5Ds, 6Ps, 7S, one of the 6Ds at AC, then come down and fill up all of the 5Fs, and then go to 6D. This portion of the periodic table, where they're just now adding in new elements, would be the seven Ps. So I think the easiest way to understand this is to use the periodic table. Since you always have access to a periodic table, and understanding the pattern, you'll always have the pattern in front of you. The other method for understanding the order that you fill is something known as the off-bow diagram. To draw the off-bow diagram, we start by writing out the orbitals of each energy level in order. So the first energy level has the s orbital. The second energy level has the s and the 3p orbitals. The third energy level, the s, the p, and the d. The fourth energy level, the s, the p, the d, and the f. The fifth energy level, the s, the p, the d, the F, theoretically, you could have a 5G out here. None of the elements on the periodic table actually use that. 6S, 6P, 6D, 6F, so on and so forth. 7S, 7P, 7D, 7F, so on and so forth. You're adding one set of orbitals. S is one orbital, P3, D5, F7, G would be nine, theoretically, and moving forward. None of the elements in the periodic table will actually go past this portion here. We're not going to use the 5G, 6F, 7D, or anything beyond. The off-bow diagram basically says we start up here at the top, and we draw diagonal lines, and we do the orbitals in the order that they come to. So the first line we draw is we go to the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, then the 3s, so 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, 3p, then 4s, 
3D, 4P, then 5S. Four D, five P, then six S. Four F, five D, six P, then seven S. And then we would finish five F, six D, seven P. So that would be the order we would fill in the orbitals. It's important that you know that the p orbitals are a set of three, d are a set of five, f are a set of seven, s is one by itself. So whether you want to use the periodic table or the off-bow diagram, you need to understand the basic order in which these fill. And then we're going to fill them in equal to the number of electrons that the atom has in its ground state. So let's start with something like magnesium. Magnesium has 12 electrons. So we're going to start two in the 1s, two in the 2s, one, two, three, we fill these up individually first due to Hund's rule, four, five, six, then they double up. That gets us to 10, we're looking at 12, so one, two. Electron configuration notation, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Phosphorus, we're now jumping to 15 electrons. 1s, fills up first. 2s, our 2p set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our 3s to get us to 12, just like magnesium. And then we have three more, so we're going to go into the 3p set. One two, three. Three unpaired electrons, each in individual orbitals there. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. The problem with electron configuration notation here at the bottom is it doesn't show us that those three electrons are unpaired. You just have to know that by understanding the orbital notation. You can count the number of electrons here very easily. Two, four, 10, 12, 15, which is the number we are looking for. You can count the arrows up top to make sure you've done it correctly. Now let's jump to iron. Iron has 26 electrons. So we're going to fill 1s, 2s, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, the 3p's, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next we get the 4s, this comes next, and then we get the 3d, this is a set of 5. 1, 2, 3, we're going to do 6 into the D set, so we do one at a time, plus one doubled up. Electron configuration notation, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6 to get to 20 electrons. Bromine, now with 35 electrons. So 1s, 2 in the 1s. 2s, 2 in the 2s, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, 1, 2, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4s, the three d's, You'll notice I always fill these up one at a time and then go back and double up just to stay in the habit of keeping the Hund's rule. And then the next I get to the four P's. One, two, three, four, five. Electron configuration notation, 1s2, 2s2, 
2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. Silver, now we're jumping to 47 electrons. Once again, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the 3ds, which come next. Four P's, the five S, that takes us through strontium with 38 electrons. And now we're going to go to the four D, one, two, three, four, five orbitals. And we're going to have nine electrons. We end up 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d9 to get our total of 47 electrons. Now the other thing we can do is electron configurations for ions. Ions are going to be very similar except we're going to gain or lose electrons depending on the ion. So let's say we had aluminum. Aluminum by itself, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 or 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. The common ion aluminum is the cation aluminum 3 plus. So 3 plus, the difference is going to be we're going to have three less electrons, three more protons in the nucleus than there are electrons in the atom. So when we take three electrons away, we just take the last three electrons away and we get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And this is isoelectric, important term, same electron configuration as neon, the previous noble gas. And that's going to be very important. The stable electron configuration is the same as the noble gases. So these elements will gain or lose electrons to be ions so that they have an equal number of electrons to the noble gas. And this will actually explain all the common charges we learned in first semester. So it's important that you know the basic order in which these orbitals fill, the number of orbitals per shape, and then can fill this in using either orbital notation or electron configuration notation.